So here we are uh, inside the, um, the, the entrance that was uh, originally constructed by Samuel Long. And, um, and as we said, uh, the house was originally about 30 feet wide. And um, the east side of the house, we, we have remnants of a wall here that we can show you when we walk in uh, to the uh, uh, behind me here. Uh, the west wall no longer exists. The west wall actually um, existed right about here. If you remember, I pointed to the rock and the differences of the rock in that corner. The wall kind of came in here. This whole space um, was, was, uh, was added by John Springer when he did the expansion. And as I talked about at the very beginning, um, this actually was not a doorway. The, or, um, John Springer used this doorway and then eventually another doorway in what we know as the living room. And this was uh, essentially probably a study or something. Um, uh, ultimately, the, the staircase went up. Um, but even that wasn't um, one of the original um, uh, additions that was done by John Springer. The uh, staircase actually went up to the back. So let's go ahead and move into the, um, uh, to the other part of the house. Although, actually, I just realized, I think I, I want to talk about um, a little bit about why we why we are moving this way, and when we move to the house, we now have a long hallway over. So why did we, uh, um, why do we now, as we move to the house, walk through this, this portal, through this entry here, and move to the back, um, if that wasn't originally how uh, the, the, uh, the, those who lived here moved through here? And the reason for that is, as I talked about at the beginning, uh, this building is, is for public use, it's for celebration, it, it's, it's to embrace and to and to welcome everyone you know, you know, into the house. And um, in order to do that, we needed to have a, a, good, uh, a good way of, of allowing people to move through the house. The only ways into the house, um, or when we, we obtained ownership of it and, and probably existed for, my goodness, at least 50, 60 years, um, was through this little doorway here, which goes through a, a tiny little hallway little uh, closet off to the side for some utilities, and then opens up into the butler's pantry. And that was the only way you could move into the back of the house unless you went down the steps through the, the, uh, the living room and then up into the dining room and then back around, which wasn't a very good approach for trying to get in there. So we, we started to move into this space over here. And I think what we will be doing is we're gonna be walking through the east side of the house. And the east side of the house had a lot of renovation done to it, um, mainly because of the condition of it, but also because it provided us the best opportunity to take and kind of create a grand entrance and a, um, to allow people to move into the house and, and access the various uh, elements to the house itself. So um, as we move through this part of the house here, this was known um, at one time as, as essentially the office or the, the library um, uh, during the uh, Lawrence Phipps ownership. And uh, it, there's some interesting elements to this house, uh, to this part of the house. Um, what we do have here is this large, heavy wall. It was actually the east side of the house um, that, that uh, Samuel Long built. And, um, and the, the, the building ended here, this, this span across here. At some point, not when um, the Phipps family owned it, but probably during the Hughes era, um, uh, and or possibly the Kissel era. There's a lot of time periods here that we, we, we're not positive of. We, we'd love to get find somebody that had a camera that uh, actually used it. But, um, but this part of the house was added um, to the building. And uh, what we found interesting, and we found evidence of this as we moved to the house, is we found evidence of this exterior wall on the east in, as we started to do some of the demolition. As I said, um, the this was not a way to get through the house. This was just a single um, uh, room that kind of continued over here. What, what, is, a, um, what is original or, or period um, of this um, room, though, is the photograph that's at the very end of the hallway here. And this was a photograph that was taken um, when Life Magazine um, did an article on um, the um, uh, Arapaho Hunt Club back in um, 1949 and um, and it was a feature article that was um, uh, that that had um, uh, talked about um, the hunt club and and uh, 
and, and was, was uh, you know, Life Magazine was a lifestyle magazine, and so it, it picked up on that. And this image uh, that you see there is actually uh, an image that was uh, taken for that article, and um, as far as we know, has been up on the wall since probably somewhere in that time period. I mean, the article was probably uh, uh, written in either late 48 or early 49. And uh, so as part of this, we, we kept that, that um, uh, the photograph here. Um, this, this room itself used to have a doorway, a fairly modern doorway. It was a sliding glass door. Not too many sliding glass doors in the, uh, the early 1900s. And uh, it went into a tiny little courtyard that existed that was surrounded on all sides by stone wall. And, um, and that was always a bit perplexing for us to understand why it existed the way it did. And um, we're not really sure why it was never filled in, but it did kind of create a nice little, um, if you want to call it a, a nice little uh, private garden space or something for um, the, the, whoever lived here at the time. Do we have any idea who built that courtyard? Any clues on that? Or just another one of those unknowns? Um, I was trying to think of periods here. Um, Probably, um, I, I was going to attribute it to Kistler, but um, but I'm not sure about that. Okay. Um, uh, because I think it was actually boxed in up before that. Okay. We're gonna as we walk through the house and we move through here, we'll talk a little bit about some of the discoveries we made, and um, and 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 one of the things that kind of confirmed we we had no idea that that there wasn't a small home that was the the original. Uh, structure on this building and actually became sort of the uh, um, uh, sort of the the, the, the seed that, that that it grew into this massive um, uh, manor house. But um, but as we started to do some renovation work in here, because as I said, this part of the building needed a lot more work than the west side of the building. Uh, we discovered um, exterior windows that were uh, that were uh, covered up. Um, we found actually some other. Uh, we, we had a, an existing bathroom over there, and then we actually even discovered a, um, uh, a small basement uh, root cellar that was roughly about 20 feet by 15 feet that, uh, was, that, entered, that was accessed from the bottom of our closet. The, um, uh, probably the, um, if you want to call it the most iconic um, historical image we have of the uh, Highland Ranch Ranch is um, an image that was taken in 1910 uh, during the ownership of, uh, of um, John Springer. And um, what, what's interesting about the uh, image is that um, there, there's so many things happening, there's so many clues that we used um, when we were trying to understand the progression of the house itself. And, um, and, and also, kind of a little fun fact, is the, the fact that on, on the, the um, east side of the house you can see horses um, and, uh, and which, of course, was so important to John Springer and in, in, uh, in, in his, uh, his interest and, and his business interest. Um, and then on the far right side, you can see a, 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 an automobile, and, uh, which certainly had been around for perhaps a decade, but um, were still quite the oddity um, you know, in the West. Um, the, the house itself um, essentially extends from uh, the, um, the, the area about where I'm standing on the, um, the east side of the library, as, as we're calling it um, at the moment, and, um, and goes all the way to the west end of the living room. And at that point it ends. Um, there is no other um, extension to the west. And if you look at the house itself, the uh, advantage of the light is that um, uh, the time of day presented that we were getting light from the back of the house and you can actually see through the house. You can see windows um, going through the living room. And what that tells us is, is um, it gave us a clue and then we found a lot of confirmation, is that the, um, the, the house during the John Springer's um, ownership only went as far back, if you will, uh, from north to south to the, the south wall of the living room itself. There was no dining room. There certainly was no um, what we call the modern library or billiard room. 
and the room that is now called the solarium certainly did not exist. Um, and you can even see on the upper level that there's a bedroom which is, was, is considered the master bedroom for rum. Um, and, um, and behind that you can see a window. And uh, that also tells us that the hallway, nothing existed beyond that. And um, the, uh, the front of the house, the um, turret, if you will, which is now the uh, grand entrance front door, uh, was a window. And, um, and even if you start to look more at the clues, you can see that um, while the roof line changed when Frank Kistler came in and put in a, uh, a pitched roof instead of the, uh, the kind of the, um, the flat roof that uh, gave you more of a uh, castle look, uh, if you look at the top of the, um, um, the turret, actually the top of it is also different. And uh, once again, it was uh, probably changed by Frank Kistler. Um, other um, other connections to the modern mansion and uh, this mansion that's over a hundred years old um, are the uh, is the existence of a doorway in the center of the living room, and uh, that doorway um, was was actually um, accessed through a, a, an elevated porch, if you will, patio that existed uh, right in front of the mansion, which still exists, but it's in a very different form. And uh, that, that doorway is now a window. And if you look at the elevation of the porch on the outside of the house, on the front, and the elevation of the living room, which certainly has not changed, um, you can see that the front porch or patio was considerably lower than the modern one that we have now. The doorway that you see um, that was used at, you know, by Kistler, I mean, excuse me, by Springer, um, is um is is the was the the formal entrance if you will to the house as you moved over to the east um the the wood um porch that exists that uh, is over the entrance that was uh, built by long is now just a canvas or a uh, a wooden type of porch that was um put on there and um and then you'll notice a lot of stone that exists across the front of the, um, the porch and then a little further down, approximately probably 20 to 30 feet further north. Um, and that, that wall uh, probably functioned as much as a, um, as a barrier for cattle and livestock from getting right up next to the house. And, uh, and that, that was very common back then to have stone walls and, uh, and if you'll notice, there's not even a, a gate per se, there's a little step uh, where you would step up and then step back down over the wall. And of course, that was to prevent livestock from getting too close to the, uh, the structure itself. While that wall doesn't exist anymore, I think it probably does exist in the, uh, the, the, the stone wall that, that, um, that surrounds the uh, front lawn and, uh, and was established as the perimeter when Frank Kistler did the expansion. And um, once again, I believe that the owners um, uh, took material when they did expansions or renovations and reused it. And so when that was demolished and uh, a much more formal uh, manor house was created, um, all that stone was then just you know, carried over and reused as part of the um, uh, perimeter wall that has uh, that goes up about three to four feet and then has an iron wrought iron uh, uh, fence that, that rims the property itself. Um, there also are is evidence of uh, what we call the bowling alley. Well, what is the bowling alley? Um, did exist back in 1910, and um, and the entrance into the um, to to get in close to the house for obviously uh, for carriages and stuff for deliveries uh, came through a. Um, an archway which um, which currently uh, is is part of what um, uh, houses the servants quarters um, above it and um, and that led you to the back of the house where the um, the carriage house exists and um, and the carriage house probably did exist during the Springer era because of course one of his um, passions and one of his um, um, uh, business interests was um, a, a carriage company and um, and raise it horses and and uh, a carriage was every bit as valuable probably more valuable than a, an automobile 
in today's world, and, uh, and those were to be protected whenever possible, whether it be with a wooden barn or with a uh, stone structure. Um, as we talked about, we, we did do uh, renovations in this, and we, we, we actually removed um, the, um, the facing that was on the wall in here and, and kind of reconfigured it when we put in the hallway. And the other thing that we uh, ended up making a decision to do was there was a doorway that actually existed right here that went into a small bathroom that, um, that also looked like it had an exterior entrance to it. Um, the, the bathroom, you'll see remnants of it when we go into the ladies' room, and, um, but it was, um, it was kind of an odd configuration because this wall was a little further back and the door opened, but only to a certain, it opened up to here, but only to this corner because this, this, uh, these cabinets uh, uh, were built by, um, uh, by uh, Lawrence Phipps during uh, his time period. Actually, probably his wife did, did some interior renovation in here. So it was a functioning bathroom for the family, but um, but was kind of an odd lot. And uh, we ended up repurposing it as part of the uh, restroom facilities for the, uh, for, as part of the, for the ladies room. So is the feeling that that bathroom was built by Kistler? Is that something <clears throat> that we're thinking? Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, most likely this bathroom was built by Frank Kistler. And the reason that we believe that to be uh, the case is the fact that the fixtures that were in there were very, um, very much from that time period of the 1930s. And uh, the coloring of it, as you'll see, we have some of the remnant tile and a, and a, and a replica tile in there is um, is of a, of a of an Art Deco type of theme to it. So it, it would appear that um, that that was added by uh, Frank Kistler. And as I said, there there's there's evidence of of probably another entrance into it. Um, and this could have been uh, a bathroom that could have been maybe used by um, by not the ranch hands, but by other people that just wanted to be able to come in and out from the outside. Um, it, it, it didn't fit well with the, uh, the other uh, restroom facility, bathroom facilities that, that we found throughout the house, that it, it kind of matched the, um, the, the intent and use of it. I think it was probably hired staff. Really? Um, yeah. Do you have pictures of that, evidence of the additional doorway? Um, we, some stuff on the outside, okay. and um, and yeah, I think it's a damn weird stucco. Yeah. To why that ever appeared, I don't know. Yeah. I, you I know, know that was kind of. Strange. It's so odd, but uh, I, so we're we're gonna start to to take ourselves down the hallway here, and and as I said, this this part of the house received the most demolition and and kind of um, repurpose throughout the. The renovation, of course, our goal was 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 not to preserve every element exactly as it was as we found it in, in let's say 1978, 79, but um, but but to, to 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 capture the elements of the house that um, that predated that, and as well as create a a, a modern um, facility that had conveniences. We, we you know we provided an elevator. Um, access so that people um, with, with all abilities can, can access the upper level because of course that never existed before. Um, we, we put in modern restrooms because again as we're hosting events here um, and, and, and this house was, was always an important uh, social um, uh, kind of a magnet for the southern area and uh, I mean the, the families that lived here were all of, of great prominence and, and and while we don't have um, specific um, examples, of, you know, as in narratives, uh, we know that there were there was a lot of, of, um, of parties, a lot of social events that occurred here, and so we're continuing that legacy. I mean, the, this community um, loves to be here. I mean, there are events throughout, and there's private events, and so people can celebrate their own lives here also. So as I, I said, we um, when we originally looked at it, we could not continue the house through here. Therefore, what we had to do was 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 create a, 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 a path by which those that are in the house feel welcome and can can come in and start to enjoy the home. Um, there was an opening here. It was more about the size of a, of a of a normal doorway, and it traveled into here. In fact, there was actually a door on it at one time, and um, 
And what we did is we, we felt that it was important to make it wider so that it communicated very clearly. You know, and come you know, come here, enter, um, and and uh, and enjoy the um, the home. And uh, and therefore we we expanded this. This wall, while um, was not a original stone wall, it would, became a very important wall. We found out um, because certainly when when uh, when um, uh, Samuel Long lived here, they certainly could not have any type of a. Um, uh, of a facility or, or uh, of a second floor that spanned 30 feet, you know. I mean, you just can't can't build that. I mean, and therefore they had to have some intermediate walls in order to support a second floor in here. And uh, and this wall was definitely one of them. And in fact, probably the most critical one. And what we found is a is, is a a, tr a lot of of generations of framing and uh, and and a little bit of demolition and add on. We found, um, beyond this, we found evidence of a doorway that existed probably a little further over here that, um, that, that must have led to, um, well, at the time, just uh, you know, part of the house. Later, we believe that it probably ended up being part of the uh, entrance for servants to get into the living room. There, there, are, there are images that we um, do have of during the, uh, um, the ownership of Wade Phillips and of uh, John Springer, and then later Frank Kistler, that show evidence of a doorway on the, if you will, the what I would call the southeast corner of the living room. Uh, as you're facing the clock, immediately to the right, there's a doorway that ex that no longer exists, but it, it sort of reflects what what probably occurred um, by those that used this house. So as we did this, we found um, various generations of, of framing and doorways. Um, and we also found some fairly bad carpentry. Um, and um, while um, certainly you know everybody wanted to make their home right, I mean, uh, it, it, at times there, people took liberty with what they felt would, would help support the upper level. Um, also below us um, is the um, the only basement that this this building has. It's very small, very narrow. But it, it's underneath the original home that was built by Long, and um, and again the, the it's it, it's made from stone wall, and um, and the basement didn't span the whole 30 feet. It actually only went to about here. So that that's a, another reason for for why this wall existed where it did here, because they were able to basically span normally about 12 to 15 feet, and then another 12 to 15 feet to help support the house, and. Um, um, and so as we um, went through and we made decisions on here, we had to reinforce this floor because it was just pretty soft. And, um, and, 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 and actually, while we tried to make the house as level as possible, we also had to make an adjustment in the floor here in order to, um, uh, to well, to match the, the, the framing below or else we would have had to remove the entire floor, which was certainly not desirable. Um, the, the, the wood, the stone that exists here um, in the turret area is a travertine, and um, we're fairly confident that was put in by uh, Frank Kistler as part of his renovation and, and kind of dressing up the house to make it a little more of a manor. And, um, and while we could not match that exactly, we did use a, a travertine tile here also in order to do that. And, um, and to be honest, a little construction um, um, a note is that we actually angled the tile instead of putting it in a straight pattern because the walls are, are kind of wobbly and we didn't want it to be so obvious that um, as you went along so when you turn things diagonally um, you, you don't notice it as much when uh, when when things are a little bit out of square um, one other thing and, and we're not going to touch a lot on it but we will um, this house was heated totally by radiators there was no air conditioning, no air handling throughout the house. Um, I mean, when it got stuffy, they opened windows when they could. Um, but in order to, to heat this house, there was a large boiler that, that, um, that functioned actually quite well, but um, it was very inefficient. And uh, when we started to deal with um, the fact of getting a large venue in here and uh, getting hundreds of people uh, you know, multiple times a year, uh, day, you know, summer, winter, we, we needed to, to, to develop a more modern 
um, heating and cooling system. So we went through and 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 um, and, and uh, removed the radiator system and then installed a a modern system that has um, sort of distributed heat and air conditioning. And we did use these enclosures that um, that existed for the radiators themselves and just built that in. Um, here it's just within a box. At some point when we get into some of the other um, more formal rooms, uh, I can talk a little bit about some of the renovations we did in there. But um, uh, that involved, because we did not have a basement throughout this house, involved a lot of crawling and some pretty industrious work by uh, some very uh, dedicated uh, 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 plumbers and, and heating contractors. Uh, so, so Jeff, you mentioned this box over here. Is that is that something that was original that you reused um, to put the, the modern heating system in? Is that what? Right, exactly. We, we um, um, uh, radiators existed here, and um, and I think probably this was added during the um, kind of the, um, uh, I think it was in the 1950s or 60s when the Phipps family uh, did some kind of um, modernization and added wood to kind of warm it up here. I mean, before that there was probably a, a radiator that just existed here by itself. There was also a radiator underneath the, the photograph um, under there that, that um, that had that. And the radiators um, were, you know, of course a very modern system. Like I said, it was, uh, I, I, over the years I would come into the house on a regular basis and um, it was always quite warm in here. I think, of course, the combination of the, the, the you know, well-run radiator system and massive stone walls helps you quite a bit on that. Um, the, um, the radiators themselves, I mean, um, uh, probably appeared um, during the, uh, the acquisition of the property and, and a little bit of modernization. There wasn't a lot of work done, but a little bit of the modernization um, that was done by uh, Wake Phillips. And uh, of course, as we go through the house, you're gonna see fireplaces in many, many locations. And uh, you know that was obviously very important in the early, um, for the early owners up until you know, uh, the mid 20s when, when Phillips acquired the property. Um, and um, it also kind of gives us clues if we didn't find a fireplace, you know, that, that part of the house probably didn't exist prior to the 1920s. Um, so um, when Wade Phillips acquired the property, there was uh, an article, because he was certainly a man of, of note um, at the time, and um, that, that he uh, had acquired this, this property and that he was going to make some, some improvements to it. And one of those was a, what was known as a physical plant. And um, that included some essential, I, I believe the article made reference to a centralized uh, heating system. So um, we see evidence of that the boiler itself is actually in a building um, outside of, of this this structure itself, uh, just across the alleyway. So that would have been sometime in the 1920s? Yes, okay. yeah, uh, I believe uh, uh, Wade Phillips acquired it in 1926. I, I, yeah, 1920 to 1926 is when Wade Phillips was here. So oh, that's right. I, I, you're right. I'm sorry. <clears throat> excuse me. Sometime early to mid 1920s. That's right. Okay. Okay. That's right. I, I got that. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Early 1920s. So yeah, you're right. He acquired it after Colonel Hughes passed away, um, and um, and so yeah, in that the, the early 20s is probably when that 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 came to be. And the and the boiler itself was a coal-fired boiler, um, and uh, very large, and uh, was was replaced in modern years by uh, with a, uh, a natural gas um, boiler and, and which actually was still in operation, you know, uh, uh, not the original one, but when we acquired the property itself. Any idea who put that in and what time of, type of time period we're looking at for that? Um, no, I, 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 I'm not sure uh, uh, when, when it, when it uh, was probably put in. My, my sense would be when it got to be a big hassle to yeah. haul coal around right. and, and uh, you know, so you would think probably sometime in the 50s, okay. but uh, would be my guess. So after the coal and the boiler system, what happened as far as utilities after that? Well, the, um, uh, the, the coal uh, fire system probably uh, existed, I mean, you know, until coal became just kind of a, a, a modern um, uh, inconvenience, if you will. Um, well, and while we did not know this, but we, we've heard reports that um, that that into the 60s, um, the coal um, furnace was still being used and coal was still being delivered here and, um, and operated by 
um, ranch hands and, and, and others, um, you know, to support the building itself. So sometime during that time period, um, you know, natural gas eventually became an option. Okay. And then as far as, you know, going to electricity, that type of, when did, any ideas on that? Um, the, the building, when, when we started doing renovation of the building, um, we, we found, um, well, obviously, electricity um, throughout the building. I mean, it, it, it's, uh, the, the capacities were, were, um, were, were quite limited, but, um, but we found um, uh, in the, um, well, in, in, in throughout the building, uh, a type of wiring called Dobbin tube. And knob and tube was very popular in the teens and twenties, and um, and somewhere somewhere after the the probably around 1930, it became um, uh, a, a, a more modern type of uh, was used. But uh, and uh, we do have some pictures of that throughout. And um, so uh, you know, always whoever owned this, while this was never the primary residence for an individual, uh, except for perhaps Samuel Long. Um, it was it was a uh, it's still a, a building of prominence and something that they wanted to show off. So it was pretty common for the owners to do their best to get what whatever was the modern convenience um, brought to their house as quickly as possible. So it would appear that sometime during the uh, teens that electricity um, arrived at the home here again for lights primarily, but but um, uh, but certainly uh, um, the, the conveniences and then. You know, later, of course, in the, as you moved into the 40s and, and uh, electrification of the, the West, if you will, uh, started to become much more popular. Uh, and this, of course, probably also as part of the, uh, um, the, um, the, in the, during the 1930s, the, um, uh, uh, the, 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 excuse me, FDR's programs to, uh, to kind of add jobs to the nation and modernize it. Okay. Well, I may or may not have said this already, but I'm a, I'm a, I'm a civil engineer, and therefore I've, a, I've been around water and sewer all my life, pretty much, and so here I am hanging out in the bathroom. But, um, but I, uh, uh, we wanted to talk a little bit about, like we were talking about the evolution of the house, and, um, and, and, and so as we, as we moved through the house, and we needed to find space to add certain um, features and and, uh, and conveniences. Um, we we had to, if you will, kind of break a few eggs, to have some stuff. Um, and so oftentimes we would be removing um, drywall that was existing. A little bit of plaster now and then, not as much plaster. We try to respect that. But we did come in and we started to to access um, parts of the house that hadn't been seen since somebody had renovated it. Um, this wall you see here is the east wall um, of the house, of the first house that was uh, constructed by Samuel Long, and um, and essentially where I'm standing, other than in the bathroom stall, is uh, was the small courtyard that existed um, that was rimmed on all four sides by by walls, and there was no way in or out except through a couple doorways, the slanting glass door that existed out of the the study library area, and then there was another doorway um, that came out of the uh, servants' quarters area. And um, this window here, we, we've kept, and um, and this was a window that, that uh, like I said, existed on the east side of the house, uh, the mansion that existed, and opened up into this, this courtyard area here. Um, uh, we, we found that several of these had iron grates across them, and we never understood why they had iron grates, since they they really, I mean, they weren't protecting anybody, you know, essentially you're, you're trying to protect yourself from somebody in your own courtyard that had to go through your house to start with. Never made sense to us. Now as we started to, to uncover sort of the uh, the chronology of the house, we discovered that, that this was actually an outside, an exterior window at one time. So um, I doubt that the iron grate was really about intruders. It was probably more about, you know, nosy horses and things like that that might want to poke their nose in here. Um, as we go through the house and we will walk through, uh, particularly in the eastern side, you'll see exposed walls like this on a regular basis. In fact, we'll show you a few more in here. And you can see in here also evidence of, of penetrations when, when wood was put in, it, it, you know, for various reasons and stuff. So, so these things um, were all built with, you know, a very specific intent. 
and then, you know, as um, as renovations were done, if that intent had been, you know, um, no longer was needed, oftentimes they just would cover it up, or sometimes they would just repurpose it. Okay. Um, so we're in the um, the the ladies' room, um, and um, unoccupied ladies' room, and. Um, we um, wanted to talk a little bit about the discovery as well as the um, the architectural finishes that we did in this. Um, a decision was made, as I uh, had said earlier, that uh, to do our best to not replicate what um, what what we found here, because th there were so many different periods that um, in which this house was was um, was added on to, expanded. Um, modernized, decorated. There was really no single um, period that, that made sense to to um, to capture. And therefore what we tried to do is reflect, you know, the the the, the, uh, the periods that, that existed throughout. Um, this this um, room itself as well as the men's room um, carries a lot of marble which we we found throughout the uh, the house as you'll see in some of the other restrooms. Um, uh, the um, while the fixtures are not necessarily Art Deco, they're a little more representative of that type of a style. Um, it was it was a, a, a rather interesting um, uh, relationship that this house had, being out, out far from Denver, the center of a massive, one of the largest ranches in Colorado, being what what many people would think would be um, a, a, a a cowboy heaven. And uh, and when we originally started, we we, we struggled. Were we going to make this look like the Ponderosa from the Bonanza series, or were we going to try to make it look like a, you know something from the you know the more modern uh, from the Dallas TV series uh, from the 1980s? And uh, and we, we we took clues from from the uh, from you know the, the things that we found. Um, and also, like I said, we had to do a lot of demolition in this part of the house. This was part of a courtyard, and then there was also, as we got a little further over, we actually had part of a, of a, of a uh, another room in here. Um, and um, and as we started to demolish, we found stone, which of course you would not build an interior wall made out of stone unless it was not an interior wall its entire life. So at one point, this was the exterior wall of the room that we were in that we, you know, where the, the picture is and where you come in into the entrance. Um, and, and the house did not extend any further south than this. Um, and then also what we found is we found, while it was an interior wall all the way through here, we also found there was a gap here all the way down. And as it turns out, that there was a doorway here. So made sense. If you're going to put up a stone wall exterior, you needed to have a doorway, and that doorway went into the space that we we just visited. Um, that that you know we often call the, uh, the the history lounge now as part of our modern uh, renovations. And if you look at the top, you'll see wood embedded in the stone. And once again, that wood was embedded in the stone. Typically, if you needed to hang a uh, a, 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 uh, some type of a roof structure or whatever over it. I mean, you, you wouldn't put wood inside masonry except when, that you needed to nail something to it. And so, um, so some of this we don't have explanations for what exactly they did here, but obviously there was a, a very real purpose in, in, in why they did this. Um, the, uh, the, the period for this, Probably, you know, this was probably existed in the in the late 1920s, and um, and, and the, um, the 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 bathroom that that did exist and the doorway that went into the other room um, was probably put in during the uh, Kistler era, and um, and if we if we um, if we look over into here, I mean, this is all marble and and uh, and and, uh, and granite. And uh, however, if you look over uh, to the, the east side of the house, what we have is we have a very green tile, a very distinctive colored tile. And this tile, uh, actually, some of which, probably about three quarter, about two thirds of it, is the original tile that we found in the house that probably dated from the 20s. And then um, because, of course, we had to demolish certain parts of it, um, we then uh, had to get a replica. Uh, tile made for it. And uh, so we felt it was important. It was a, a little bit of a bonus space that we had, um, as well as the fact that we wanted to um, kind of 
you know, illustrate um, and, uh, and and show uh, you know a certain level of um, of uh, respect for what did exist. So the green and black was was very. Uh, those were the colors that we found for this particular bathroom. Every bathroom has different colors. It's it, you know it's just an interesting little little uh, uh, homage to, to, to uh, the, the designer of this this house. Um, this was a functioning bathroom, and what we did find in here also in this courtyard was uh, we actually found a a space below this that we did not know existed. It wasn't totally hidden, but it wasn't obvious. It was in the back of a closet. There was a small doorway, and when you opened the doorway, you went down, and what you found in there would be a Kindor root cellar, if you will. It was a basement. It was it was totally excavated. It was tall enough for people to stand in. Not only about um, I think about 15 feet by maybe 12 feet. Um, wasn't real tall though, and it certainly wasn't anything that um, could have been used for any other than storage, perhaps for vegetables, perhaps for roots. Somebody even suggested maybe it was used to store beverages uh, during the uh, prohibition period. So, um, um, and it was fascinating. Um, unfortunately, uh, the renovation required that we had to have a, a, a stable. Uh, structure for it, so we we documented what we could in there. There was nothing of of, of real artifact value, and then we had to fill it in in order to create a, a foundation for the, the new restrooms. So that basement was underneath the floor here in the women's restroom. It was, and it, it actually yes, it actually came in through that bathroom, that green bathroom that uh, oh, that, that was there, and uh, there was a closet, and we um and we we found that closet and. Uh, well, it, it exists, and we opened it up and, and found the, the staircase going even down to it. Yeah, I'm and um, and and uh, wanted to talk a little bit about some of the elements here. Well, there are a lot of similarities to uh, to what we found in the uh, in the, the structure, the walls of the ladies' room. We also uh, found uh, some some different elements. The uh, the stone wall here, as you can see, the the, this is still a continuance of the east wall of the the um, uh, the uh, Senator Long house, and um, and as we um, and and then also what we found is that um, that we have um, stone surrounding the building with some very different masonry patterns. You know, we have um, kind of a fat masonry here with this field stone. You look over to this other wall over there and you actually see a joint that goes vertically all the way down. And um, so this defines that we have two different walls that met here. That there was, this was a point of an expansion that, it, that occurred. And, um, and you can see some wood embedded in, in there. That's typically um, there probably for a window that existed at one time and then an opportunity existed to expand the house, and therefore, that's when you, if you're going to have to take down some some wall, um, you might as well take take it down at the point of a window, and therefore not have to worry about uh, removing as much. So, as you see throughout, you see kind of an unusual score pattern. You see a, a different a difference in the type of building materials in here, and so once again, what we and and then you can see the archway. Um, on the ceiling there, and of course that that's also symbolic of. of uh, so um, so also um, uh, at this this uh, this this uh, entrance uh, and or window that went into the uh, to this space here, you can see the archway at the very top, and uh, of course that's evidence of either a, a uh, large window or a doorway that existed in here. So once again, what we had is uh, a situation where we had the east wall. Decisions were made to um, expand the house, and um, and stone was brought in, not the exact same stone, but um, and and the house was expanded. Um, in this case, uh, there was a courtyard in here, and then the stone that you see um, along the wall adjacent to the marriage was actually a north wall for a uh, portion of the house that housed the servants' quarters as well as the. Uh, 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 kind of an eating area for the servants that existed. So Jeff, can you tell us where we are in the house now and tell us about the wall that's behind you? Certainly. Um, 
this, um, uh, as I said before, when we had to look at, at how best to, to make this facility work um, for visitors, um, we needed to have a, a, a passageway by which we could uh, move into the, the, the main part of the house um, that didn't involve steps. Um, and we also wanted to have something that was, you know, could carry some volumes because if we were going to do um, large events, you know, we wanted to be able to, to have more than one person at a time move through a, 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 a walkway or a pathway. Um, so we chose this area. This area actually was um, uh, what was used as the kitchen um, in, in the original, or well, in the house that, that we received in, in, uh, in uh, 2010. And, um, and this area here that I'm standing in was, a, was the working kitchen, if you will, during the probably the last 50 years of the, of the, the um, residency in the house. And the kitchen, unfortunately, was not all that notable. It was um, 1950s, 1960s, 1970s, maybe even some 40s type of, of um, uh, a finish on it. It had linoleum, it had this, it had that uh, um, for mica. And so um, uh, even though it was interesting in some ways, we, you know, it was okay for us to kind of remove all of that. Um, so, so anyways, this, this space in here um, also defined the back of the house um, as we originally knew it. This wall here was, um, although it was covered with uh, drywall and, and, and such, um, was the back of, of, of even the modern house that, that we had here. And this opening that we have here was actually a, just a window, a window about, about here and up and not quite as wide as this. And so it allowed us our best opportunity to kind of move through and, and remove that area in there. Also what we discovered when, like I said, we had drywall and, and, um, and finishes and modern finishes. And as we remove this, um, we discovered the, the staircase that went to the second floor of the, or the, you know, if you will, the upper level because it wasn't even a, a full second floor in the original longhouse. And, um, and this here um, actually defined the, the, the staircase itself. The staircase was embedded. There's, there's little pock marks here. We're, we're actually embedded, framed into the stone and the, and, the, and the staircase went up, which was my understanding from Historians was very common. I mean, typically modern or uh, uh, homes back in those periods didn't have a, any kind of a, of, a, of a staircase that you know as you walked into the front of the house. Or, you know, it really wasn't an entry. There was just you walked in and there was there was living quarters, if you will, and then you went upstairs. So um, um, we have some pictures of this, and it's pretty fascinating um, how the how the staircase um, went in here. And then this was was actually a window. Um, right now. Um, you see um, uh, stone and mortar behind there because it's actually um, the back, if you will, or the, one of the walls of the ice house. But, um, but at one time, this was, again, the back of the house, and this was a window that, um, that, that went out. And, um, and as we had talked about before, this was, this was the edge of, the, of the, um, the log house right here. This was the eastern wall that went in there. This doorway here, which goes into an area that was uh, used as kind of a dining Area. It's now a catering space. We can show, show you that later. Um, has an archway over it, showing that it was a, a, again a stone wall and an exterior entrance into the into the house itself. So, so this, this area running, you know, kind of um, north to south was the the edge of um, of the home itself. Um, we do we do have remnants of a chimney, you know, and a cook stove that that did exist in here. And then as you went out into this area to the back. It was just the you know an open um, gravel and, and um, it was used a parking area. There there is the carriage house that we'll look to a little later here on the walk and um, that existed and it was probably built by Springer um, because it was a carriage house and it it, it it was six had six bays to it and would have made sense for him being in the business of of fancy carriages and um, and so that was set back in that area and then. When we looked at the design and how best to, to meet the needs of a, of a public space, and um, we looked at possibly expanding parts of the building, um, none of them really worked well. And um, and so, as in, in, in a moment of revelation, if you will, we we started to look at um, the courtyard as as a venue. And um, and when we get in there, I'll talk a little bit about that because it was kind of interesting. The, 
how we how we move through the uh, the iterations to, to get where we are today. So we're moving into the um, the great hall and and actually going outside, so to speak. Um, we're we're moving through um, the uh, the house and uh, as I made reference earlier, um, you know, one time this this area in here was the back of the house, um, both with um, with uh, the long house and then. You know, during most of the modern period, I mean, you do see a large stone wall behind me, but, um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later, but it, this stone wall was actually just created as a barrier or, well, as, a, uh, as an element to separate the, the, the courtyard, which was more of a parking area and kind of a, a maintenance or utility area, from the, the, the back yard, the lawns, and um, that was, of course, used more for entertainment and leisure. Um, uh, this wall here, um, like I said, was, was, was constructed probably during the, um, the, the Kistler period. Well, I, I take that back. It, it was, Kistler touched it and modified it, but um, we're not positive, but it, it, uh, it, it may or may not have existed when Springer here. Uh, we don't think that he would have put this quite this level of, of effort into it. Uh, there, there's a, a gap in here. And, some of us feel that probably um, Colonel Hughes did, did some, uh, some work there. And then probably um, Wade Phillips, even though he was only here for about five or six years, um, did do some expansion in this area. And, uh, and, and you know, and I talked about utility versus lawn and all that. And we also have to remember that as a working cattle ranch, while they didn't have, you know, um, livestock roaming everywhere, um, you know, they're, they're, they're not cats, you know, so you have to have some significant barriers in order to keep them out of areas that you don't want them in. And if you have a garden in your backyard, um, you don't want to have creatures that like to eat out of the garden um, wandering in there on any given time. So so it's very uh, reasonable that, um, that whether they were short walls, tall walls, or whatever, um, things existed just to keep those areas separate. Because um, actually stone was a little more readily available than, uh, than wood. Um, I mean, wood uh, took a lot more resources to kind of get down here. Um, so anyways, we, um, this corner uh, shows, as I said, the um, kind of the transition of the house and, uh, and, and, uh, and the, the builders or the owners um, did us some favors because they decided to use different materials or reuse materials sometimes that they brought out of other parts of the, uh, the, the mansion complex or the ranch complex. And um, in here you can see that uh, the, the wall here um, is that, that um, kind of field stone, that kind of dark brown red stuff that uh, again came with the, um, the long house originally. Um, obviously this is very, very different material here. This is, this is um, stone that was collected. It's, it's, it, it remind, it's a river rock of, of, of a type. Um, although it also can be um, created by other geological um, events, and you have to talk to geologists to get that, that information on there. But again, they obviously it was it was fairly readily available, whether whether on the property or along the Platte River basin, and so they were able to kind of haul this stuff up here fairly, fairly easily. And it, it's used throughout. In fact, it's heavily used um, for walls and, um, and and throughout the throughout the building. Um, harder to build with if you ever try to build a retaining wall than, than the stuff that can be uh, kind of chipped and quarried a bit, but, um, but, but once again, labor was probably relatively cheap. Um, so as you see here, I, I spoke before about the fact that, that the doorway that we now use as the main, to go into the Great Hall wasn't the original walkway into there. This door here existed from, we believe, probably from when, uh, uh, when uh, Long owned the house because this was the only um, entrance and, and exit into the backyard once you got into the, to the west wing areas, if you will. Um, and you can look there, you can see the archway of stone over the doorway. That obviously gives us a pretty good indication that this thing was put in with the original house. You can also see the archway here that was over the window. So once again, um, you know, some elements there that kind of, you know, tell you that this, um, that this was intentional, it didn't just show up here. Um, the, 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 the building, or the, the wall to my 
left is uh, called the Ice House, and we can talk about that. It, it accommodated both ice storage that they would just cut from the ponds, but also there are some walkways and there were some areas that were used for the servants' quarters uh, to do that. We, in order to allow people to move to the house again, we had to make some modifications. So at the end of the day, we ended up cutting out a portion of this wall, again, to allow people to move through here um, and, um, and move into the main part of the house without having to go up and down stairways or move to the, the living room because it's, it, it, it kind of, um, it's, it's not a good traffic flow and, and of course, so visitors that want to be in this great hall for events and all that can then kind of walk through here without having to go all the way around the house. Um, this room that's to our, um, to my right here, which is to the west, was, um, was again another series of additions that, that happened there. And there's some pretty fascinating things that we'll talk about. But again, we found evidence of, of, it, of, of this being added because of the stone walls that you see behind me and, and over this wall. Uh, also, um, we see archways, which define the fact that you have fences, excuse me, that you have doorways throughout. Uh, and then we find on the west wall of this, this room, uh, which was called the breakfast nook in the, the modern era, if you will, uh, we find brick um, construction. So again, something that's very different and obviously, um, even though different materials are used here, uh, I can't imagine anybody just starting with one, one type of material and then just changing to something totally different. I mean, that, that didn't make sense. So, so again, it kind of helps define the different periods. And we also found framing, um, uh, a roof framing that showed that there were a couple different roof styles that were put on that. And sometimes they just built one on top of the other. And um, uh, luckily, they, they kind of didn't just remove and replace. They just kind of added. Um, and therefore, that allowed us to have some pretty good um, clues as to how things occurred. Um, and, and so, when we walk into the space, it's probably hard to see it now. I'll talk a little bit about that, and we can kind of just, it's a very small space, but there's a lot happening in, in, in you know, about uh, 500 square feet. Um, uh, the progression now that we talked about in construction also uh, includes um, uh, discoveries, and um, uh, uh, we don't have a lot of, of historical record with respect to drawings, way up to zero drawings, except for the 1929-30 um, renovation, um, and images. Although there is an image that, um, that we've used. Um, it was in a book by Josephine Marr, which talked about the history of uh, Douglas County. And, and um, it, it's a very grainy old image, but it, it, it makes reference to the, to, the, to the residents here during the period of, uh, of uh, law. And, um, and it, 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 it luckily, well, fortunately, um, it was from the south looking to the northwest, if you will. And, um, and then all of a sudden, when we took that and found that, and uh, we didn't find that originally, but it, it, as the project moved along, somebody discovered it, um, we, um, we, we could kind of line it up with um, what, what we saw in the building itself, the building record. And what we saw in the building, building record is that um, the, the remnants of the original house are still partially there. As it is in the front, on the sides, all over, windows um, sometimes exist, and sometimes they get moved, got shifted from one place or another. But what we could see in this Josephine Marr image was an unmistakable, you know, peak of the roof, the crown of the roof, um, along with the, um, uh, the, the, the window directly, uh, you know, below it. It, it, it. If I recall, the window looks like it shifted a little bit, but it's still there. And you can see that in the stone. The stone doesn't lie. I mean, it, it, it all exists there. Now, there, it, the, 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 the history that was known before we started renovation was that Frank Kistler added the, the peak roof. The, um, originally, the, the, the house, as we do know from the images, was more of a flat roof, castle, parapet type of design. But, um, but as it turns out, Long um, had a, a, his house wasn't like that. It was it was it had a, a big frame roof in it because that was their second story. You know, it, it, it was more of an attic type of uh, configuration of any spaces used for living. And when we did frame, or when we um, did the, the demolition upstairs, uh, we actually found evidence of those um, of those trusses and 
in frames uh, on an angle there, which were, were later cut off. And, uh, and actually, in this case, a, a flat roof was actually added in some of those, those areas. Um, and uh, so it was, it was kind of interesting. But, but nonetheless, the, uh, uh, and in order to, to allow people to kind of see that, and, and also because we kind of wanted to add a little more light to this, this particular spot, because um, it, was, it was a tunnel, if you will, we put a large skyline in. It's a modern skylight. Um, there was actually a, kind of an old historic skylight. Well, there was an old skylight in the courtyard area, which um, we, we have stored right now, but it wasn't in, in, in good enough shape to, to be reused. But um, we put the skylight in, and if you stand below the skylight and you look up to the, um, um, to the second story of the uh, original house, you can see the, the windows, uh, you can see the arch, and you can start to see you know how the whole house um, started and then grew, you know, considerably. Tell us a little bit more about this room. You started some of the construction history in there, but we'd love to see and hear more about it while we're in here. What's some of this out to us? Certainly. Um, uh, this, as we had talked about, this was known as the breakfast nook area, and uh, and again, it was another room that was added. Uh, at some point in time, it, 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 after a while, I mean, we can see evidence of the, the rooms being added. Some, uh, many of them had specific purpose. Some of them, um, it just seemed like they, they they just added small spaces from time to time. Uh, this one, though, definitely had a lot, um, uh, you know, a, a story and a lot of history in the walls, so to speak. No Declaration of Independence, by the way. But, uh, <laughs> uh, the history is all in stone. Um, if you look at the um, the stone, as I, I talked about, and, and you know, as we revealed this, these walls were covered either with drywall or plaster, as a whole. And um, uh, this wall, in particular, was a plaster uh, covered wall, and uh, we ended up uncovering part of it because there was actually a ceiling in there, uh, uh, a, a flat ceiling that we needed to demolish and do work on. But as we did that, we started to discover things that were no longer evident, and. Uh, and at the end of the renovation, we made a, a, a conscious decision to keep some of these things exposed to allow people to kind of see for themselves instead of just, you know, looking at pictures. Um, so if you look up here, you can see, of course, the, 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 the dark stone, the stone that was used in some of the house. And this was still, the, this is approaching the west end of the original house that was built by, uh, uh, by Wallen. And, uh, and you can see that there's actually two archways right here, which is kind of interesting because you, you don't build archways for the heck of it, you know. So, I mean, this is all a, a, a single stone uh, wall here. You build an archway because you have an opening of some type. Well, if you look above, uh, you know, almost touching the ceiling, you can see a, a, an archway there. That had to be the first one because there's no reason you would build a small archway over a large archway later, and it served no purpose. I mean, um, therefore, that must have existed at one time. It is probably a window or, you know, probably not the doorway because we know there was a doorway just next to it here. Um, so it was a window of some form. And then, at some point, uh, that was no longer deemed necessary, and this large archway was, was constructed instead. Um, this archway was probably um, either just an opening into the back um, or probably a window. Um, more, more than likely, just don't build doorways that large. Um, it requires a lot of, a lot of work in, in order to hold the, the whole thing up. Therefore, um, so we saw this, 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 this archway here again. Tells us quite a bit about you know, how the house kind of evolved again as we talked about um, the, the owners will come in and they do their own work. Um, and, um, and then as we move over here a little bit, um, we, we come to the point where this is the west end of the, of the wall, uh, of the uh, house. This was the west end and the back wall, the south wall. So in other words, this was the southwest corner of the um, long house. And if you look directly above where my hand was, uh, you can see a, a, a distinct change in materials and a seam that goes up and down, and um, you wouldn't have a, a, a vertical seam like that unless they change construction, because you always want to blend stone 
back and forth for, to, in order to get strength. Therefore, there was an expansion onto this at some point. Now, it's not very long. I mean, it's six to eight feet. Um, and then it ends, and then we come to another corner, and, um, and, in, and in that corner, we actually go into a different material altogether. Another interesting change here is if you look at this end of the wall here, and if you go into the butler's pantry, which we'll visit in, in a bit here, you'll see that there's a ramp that goes down. So, um, uh, not, not much of a ramp, but the, the, the floor elevation changes. And, um, and as it turns out, the, um, uh, that was, again, defined by the changes in the phase of construction, um, things moving through here. Now, why did always the floor level change? Um, in some of the original house, it was basically a, a floor built directly on the ground, a slab on grade, as people call them nowadays, uh, with a little bit of a, of a, um, uh, a, a, a um, basement, but not a lot. In this area where I'm standing here, this was actually elevated off the ground by um, about, this one's about 18 inches or so, um, maybe, maybe almost two feet. And below this, we have some some uh, pipes and some some heating uh, for the heating system and, and for the plumbing system that uh, was built. So uh, that also again tells us that it was probably built post you know somewhere in the 1920s uh, or later you know type of period. Not as late as the uh, Frank Kistler expansion because he wouldn't have gone through and made this change here with the different materials when he. He was uh, he made some very distinctive um, material um, decisions, including the introduction of the Tricky Creek sandstone, Tricky Creek sandstone, which um, you know is throughout the um, the areas where he added, as well as he went back and kind of modified some of the existing um, doorways and windows and, and kind of inserted some of that, I guess maybe to make his own mark. Um, so so below us here there is a. It, it, if you want to call it a crawl space, it's definitely a crawl space. I mean, you, you can't stand up or anything like that, but, but it did also allow us the ability to, when we were running some of the utilities, to kind of work our way through uh, this instead of trying to tunnel or, 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 no, or tear up the floors, which we definitely did not want to do if, if possible. Jeff, can you tell us about a few more of the features in here? Say the elevation change from the breakfast nook into the dining room, the change of materials between the two rooms, um, this feature right here in the middle of the room, and then maybe that archway above the doorway there. Can you yeah, sure, tell us sure. more about that? Sure. Uh, uh, th this room, again, was, was added. It was not part of the original uh, long house. Um, it was added at some point, but um, not as late as the, uh, the Kistler era or the Kistler renovations. Um, and, um, and and this, this floor itself that I'm standing on is, is, is about, in this case, about 8 to 10 inches higher than the, the, the floor, the, the dining room that we, that we have here. Um, and um, and it, it was at one time, of course, its own room, its own uh, uh, corner of the house. Um, and uh, there were utilities and stuff that went through here. This opening um, gives us access to get down in there to to kind of uh, uh, to get to the utilities. There was a uh, there was a, a bit of a hatchway there, but it was it was mainly just used for for um, access into that because there really wasn't uh, you know some great access in it. There was a um, as I talked about the access here. There there was actually a uh, a a, a tunnel, if you will, not a secret tunnel, uh, but a steam tunnel. It was, um, these were very common during certain time periods. They were excavated out, and there were concrete walls poured in it, and it ran through the back of the house and ran all the way out to the boiler room, and it carried pipes and everything that ran utilities into here um, at one time. And we, at the end of the day, we had, to, we had to pretty much demolish it because the elevation for the Great Hall um, required that we we get in there, we, we had to take the top off of it, if you will. It's filled in with soil because uh, we no longer needed that. But um, this wall here was the west end of the um, that, of this addition. This corner over here was at one time the, the northwest corner um, uh, of the house. And, um, and as you step down into here, this is where um, 
there were expansions done as part of the Kistler era. Again, for reasons unknown, um, we we had um, we, you know very nice ornamental door here, which was used as an interior door. But as we removed the plaster and drywall, we discovered brick throughout this. And um, again, brick was the first time we found brick introduced into this the, the building here. And that also told us that they wouldn't build a brick wall um, if, it, if it was just for the interior use. Therefore, this was an exterior um, entrance or exit at one time. And probably, um, while the wood trim came with, with Kistler, there, there probably was a, um, a, a large opening here to go out because you can see again the archway through there. And you can also see kind of openings in the brick, and that isn't because brick fell out. That's actually where uh, wood uh, was 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 uh, placed. That you basically put your uh, your wood uh, timbers in there in order to support a ceiling, and so um, so they were actually embedded into the brick. Once again, you know, uh, all these things were, were put in here for for the purpose of of the, the need that they had at the time. It wasn't a large expansion; they didn't go any further out. Uh, and they didn't go any further west. Um, just they added this for reasons unknown, but obviously they had a purpose for it. As you go into this back living room, um, as I said, this, this expansion was part of the Kistler era. However, what, what we'll talk about when we, when we get in an ISET living room, a dining room, um, is we move into the dining room. What we'll find is the dining room wasn't built all in one phase. And, um, and uh, it was built in two phases, and it, ref it reflects upstairs as we go upstairs, and we found elements of it where um, when uh, Kistler came in and he added bedrooms upstairs, he actually expanded. There was a second floor before Kistler, but um, it wasn't as deep, if you will, north to south as it was before. And what was probably one of the more fascinating discoveries that we did find in here is as we were running these utilities in here and our contractors were, were crawling um, under, there, there, there's a little bit of crawl space underneath the back dining room area here, um, they discovered two large round cisterns. Um, they're about four foot diameter, they're about 12 feet deep, and, um, and the reason for those, uh, some people might have thought, well, it, it was kind of like a like for sewage or something, and nobody in their right mind would, would have their, uh, their, uh, their, 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 their sewer right next to the house. You know, it would be out the, in the, if they had piping, which they did, they would run it out somewhere, and typically they were kind of a, a septic or leach field type of configuration. Um, so these were for water storage, and, um, and it was right next to where the kitchen was, it was very close to the home, and actually there are um, a few pictures, not many, of the house in the early 1900s um, where there's a windmill not at the top of the hill but immediately behind the house. If you look you can see the windmill over the, the, the roof line in there. So there was a windmill right out back here we actually there's a, a kind of a, a round a well looking structure that we that uh, we have still in the backyard that may have been the location of the windmill or it may have been a little closer but nonetheless they they stored water inside the house here that way they didn't have to go all the way outside just to, to bring buckets of water into the house. I know this might be a hard question and that we don't have you know 100% definite proof mm -hmm. of some of the history of the back portion of the mansion but can you make you know just an educated guess as to who might have put in the breakfast room, who put in the first portion of the dining room. Is there any guess on that? Um, I, 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 I think probably um, if, as I think about the use of the house um, and of course John Springer had a nice big big, big uh, place um, but he also, um, they, they had a dining room area that they, that they used, but oftentimes dining rooms were not where um, the owners would eat if it wasn't, you know, more of a formal meal. And therefore, you, you had this room here that was added at some point when, when somebody was here. Now, John Springer didn't live here a lot, a lot. I mean, uh, every one of the, of the, of the 
was a loner, had a had a place in town, and uh, and let's face it, day to day they probably um, during the weeks they, they they lived out there. They came out here in the, in the, on the weekends from time to time, um, and um, and so I think it probably was not even Springer, but. Um, because it, it, it would have had a few more elements that would have tied with the, the, the work that was done by him. Um, so I think it was uh, probably uh, Wade Phillips would be my guess. Um, because Wade Phillips bragged about adding physical plant and heating and cooling and centralized systems when he acquired the property. Um, the, the, the elevation of this floor and all the things about it kind of uh, start to lead to something like that. That's when the steam tunnels would have been built. So that, that kind of gives um, a little bit of a connection to that. Um, why the brick was used, I don't know, but um, but it, it, it seems like possibly that, that would have um, played in with, with what was going on there. He didn't, Wake Phillips didn't have a dining room that was this large. Um, and uh, and in fact, we, you know, we see some images where the dining room didn't, actually didn't even exist. Um, uh, during, you know, except for maybe later in that time period. That one's a little little off, a little bit there, as far as what was the half dining room or the full dining room. But, um, but it, it seems like possibly, um, even though Wake Phillips didn't live here a lot either, um, that it could have occurred with him. There's also a possibility it could have been with Colonel Hughes. Um, uh, th those would be the two candidates that I would, I would speculate um, would have done it. And then this would have been a nice informal area for them to, to just to eat and um, and of course the, the views would be pretty amazing and um, so it's it's boy we, we would just love to find some some records I mean there just isn't a, isn't a lot there but um, but they're they're um, I, I think things will come forward. Um, this is probably one of the most memorable rooms in the mansion. I mm -hmm. would think you would agree with that, probably. Absolutely. Um, and it's seen several transformations over its history. Yes. So can you tell us a little bit about that and what might have been uncovered during the renovation? Certainly. Um, and and, I, and I'll, I, I'll do my best to explain what we found and, and, uh, and, and also um, because we, we have been fortunate enough to have photographs from several time periods uh, that really helped us a lot here. But there still are more than a few unanswered questions, of course. Um, as you said, this is definitely one of the most striking rooms. Luckily, we really did not have to do much of a modification at all to, to, the, um, to this room. And, uh, and that made us happy because, I mean, it doesn't need to be modified. You know, it's, it's such a, 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 an amazing space. And, and, um, and the stories that, 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 that this room must tell of, of the gatherings is, is incredible. Um, where I am right now is kind of in the northeast corner. And as you can hear, you can hear the clock kind of uh, making, making some noise. I guess we're about to, we'll, we'll, we'll about hit the, the, uh, the hour here, so we'll have uh, chimes with that. But, um, and, and you know, perhaps the best thing is this clock. This clock um, appeared, um, Somewhere around, you know, in in the 20s or, or maybe the 1930 renovation. It's uh, we're not sure of the exact time of it. Um, it it's it's a very striking feature. It, it um, um, when Kissler sold the property, he he had an intention of taking it with him, but um, he was not able to do that. And um, uh, when the Phipps family bought it, and um, over the years, it, it has worked and it has not worked. But luckily, we we have been able to work with. Um, uh, with uh, uh, artisans and craftsmen that, that um, are able to, to bring it back. And, and uh, a beautiful clock. It's, um, it's, it's German of origin. Um, there, there is um, um, a saying on it that uh, is, uh, is Latin, uh, Italian, and um, uh, talking about the passage of time. And, uh, and, uh, the, and there, the, some of the features on it are kind of interesting. There's a uh, cherubs at the very top of it are um, uh, are featured in a couple other places in the mansion, and um, so uh, it, it, it's fitting to have it in such a regal room to have such a regal clock. 
Um, as I said, the clock wasn't always here, and even this wall has changed over time. That um, uh, photographic evidence that we have during the Springer era um, of this room shows that um, this was a very different space. Um, during the, uh, the Springer era, uh, there was actually a, a, a doorway here, and a doorway that went into the, to the back space. And, and that's primarily um, to allow this access because the, the turret that existed, and as you can see in the photographs from uh, the, the Springer era, uh, was constructed, but it was not the entrance into the mansion. The actual entrance to the mansion went, came into this room. And, um, and this, this archway here um, most likely did not exist either. The, uh, the travertine that was, that was built, the, the grand staircase and all those elements of it. Um, and, and here we will, we will take a pause and listen. Let's see. And so the, um, at, at one time the, the, the grand staircase didn't exist and the, while the turret was here, that, that, that archway did not exist. That was added later. Uh, this doorway here provided access into essentially the you know, part of the living area. It connected to a, what was the, um, the, the, the house that was built originally um, as part of um, Long's original um, construction. And, um, and the step ups and the, the, the levels have always, you know, had a scratch in our heads as to why, um, why the, the floor levels varied so much. Um, the room itself um, has some, some beautiful uh, woodwork throughout and, uh, and it was heated by radiators. And uh, we can talk a little bit about those enclosures as we move around the room there. Um, this was, if you look at the, the photo from 1910, this was uh, in, you know, as part of the, the, the Springer uh, estate. But this was the back of the building right here. And uh, if you look at the photos, you can actually see through the windows. And, and there is a, a, an indoor photograph that, that shows that this doorway archway that goes into what's now the dining area was actually a, um, a window. And uh, so, um, so now we're uh, in the, uh, if you will, the center portion of, uh, of the, uh, the living room. And, um, and without a doubt, the, the most um, dominant and, uh, and uh, an amazing feature in this room is the fireplace and the hearth. And, um, and as I and explained earlier that, you know, the building received heat from, from radiators uh, when the physical plant was built. Um, however, this fireplace, of course, was, was uh, not just a main source of heat, but a, a, the gathering place for the family. You know, uh, the, the, the photos that we have from the time period, starting with Springer, um, you know, this was the main living area, if you will. This is where people gathered. I mean, of course, fires can be romantic. They can be, um, th there's a bonding that goes on when you sit around fires. And, um, and the fireplace that existed here during the era of Springer was very, very different than this one. Um, it, it's, it's, um, uh, it was made of, of, of you know, quarried stone. Um, it had an S inscribed on some of the benches, which were also stone, probably not that comfortable, but uh, um, that, that were in, in the area. And it was, it, was, it was a fair amount smaller. It was still a large fireplace. But dur during the era when... Um, uh, when Frank Kistler came on board and uh, took over, he, he wanted to make this, you know, definitely a, an icon within the, the, the home itself. And so he, uh, he had this, this incredible fireplace carved. And, uh, and, and one of the reasons we know, other than photographs, that uh, this it can be attributed to Frank Kistler is because on the mantle here you see 1929 and 1930, um, carved right in there and, uh, and also in there uh, you can see the Diamond K and this is the Diamond K brand of course which was uh, Frank Kistler's so he made this very easy you know um, and, um, and then also on there uh, there's essentially a uh, if you would like to call it a floor plan a, and, uh, what would be viewed as an aerial view of, of the mansion as he created it um, you know, it's a, it's a very striking feature. It's very uh, interesting. Uh, people, of course, always gravitate towards it. And I think it also was, uh, if you will, uh, um, probably very, very typical of Frank Kistler to, to want to, uh, if you will, create a, a tribute to his effort. 
you know, not just in the structure itself, but to essentially memorialize it in stone. And, um, and this fireplace also, as I talked about with the, uh, the, the miniseries uh, Centennial, was, uh, was also a focal point for several of the shoots in here. Uh, one of the things that is interesting about this fireplace, too, is the fact that, you know, as, as, as we know, this, this house was uh, expanded over time. And if you go into the attic, the, um, the chimney comes up and then it actually shifts over and moves further up because when the roof was, um, was rebuilt into, instead of a flat parapet type roof, into a, a you know, a pitched roof, more of a, uh, uh, a Victorian or a uh, uh, European style, um, they had to, they had to shift the uh, the chimney a little bit, and so it's it's actually funny. The smoke still goes up and, and goes out of it. So, um, uh, without a doubt, a uh, uh, an amazing feature for this home. We also know that um, at one time there was actually a fireplace on the other side of it. That there were sort of back to back fireplaces that exist during the Springer era, not during during this period here, and uh, and that probably again was a source of heat as well as um, source of, um, of, um, of, of kind of, uh, uh, of joining together, you know, any activities that occurred in, the, in the, the, the billiard room or the game room that existed on the other side of this. Um, but, but once again, during the Springer era, this was the back of the house. This was the end of it. And so, of course, when you build a, a house during those time periods, you don't put a chimney in the middle of the house. You stick it on, on one of the outside walls. And so that, that's another thing that makes this uh, an interesting feature and also uh, somewhat unusual because you, know, you, you wouldn't see this as often in a, in a home that would be built you know, during uh, later time periods. So continuing our tour of this, uh, this, this great space, um, I, I thought I would just reference a few other features uh, within this room itself. Uh, one of the things, as I spoke earlier uh, about, was the turret originally functioned as just a turret. And uh, the doorway that, that we all know now um, did not appear until during the Kistler renovation and the grand staircase that went up to the second level. Um, the formal doorway uh, for the mansion, if you will, was immediately behind me here. This window that existed here was the formal doorway. Now, if somebody were to look at this and look outside, they say, well, the patio was set up so high. And again, that was one of these, these times when the, you know, the area evolved. And you know, the, uh, when, when Frank Kistler did his, his major renovation and, 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 uh, and expansion of elements of the mansion, he created this, this very classic um, front promenade um, patio porch and uh, and in doing so he adjusted the elevations out there so that may have been the reason why the doorway moved because uh, the grades didn't work anymore or it just that he fit uh, but I think probably more like it was that he wanted people to walk in and see that grand staircase as it moves up so um so this uh, was no longer the doorway why do we know it's a doorway? Because if you look at the, the pictures from, that Wheat Phillips had of his son on a pony, you can see the doorway, it's partially open um, uh, in that photograph. And if you look at that doorway, uh, the lighting isn't the greatest on the photo, but it's not hard to see. That doorway now exists and it's in the Great Hall. It was actually re, um, repurposed, if you will, reinstalled in the stone wall between what, what at one time was just a courtyard and the back lawn area and uh, we still we have that doorway there now so so even with great renovations uh if you have a, a feature like that have something like that you 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 move it around and the and i spoke of cherub uh features and there was a small cherub uh that is actually on that doorway which again ties to the uh to the cherubs that are on the um the clock the um the question's been asked several times uh, regarding the uh, flooring. And as a rule, we, again, we tried to, to keep all, all original elements that we found in here. Uh, this oak floor did exist. And um, however, just based on the pattern and the fact that, that um, it ties with the, uh, the dining room area, which was uh, definitely totally rebuilt by Frank Kistler. This area was rebuilt 
we think that the, this this oak floor in here is probably from that that uh, upgrade that that Frank Kistler did during that time period. It actually does not sit on the ground. Uh, there is a short crawl space underneath it, and uh, you know, not only two foot high, and uh, and that allowed us actually to when we did the renovation to come in and run piping underneath it to do an upgrade on the uh, heating system because this was a. a uh, heated by radiators before we wanted to to put a more modern more efficient system in and one that could could essentially accommodate crowds more often so um, so we did that renovation and uh, while while this feature looks very similar to what was there before actually when we did the renovation the the modern units that we had were deeper if you will than what the radiators were and, uh, and so we needed to come up with an accommodation. Do we change everything? How do we do this? Because they literally, the grates would no longer go back in. We were able to, uh, to work through our trade network, if you will, and we found an incredibly talented carpenter. And he was able to come in, remove the space, remove all this, set it aside, re, um, re, re, uh, uh, kind of add on to this with the same type of wood that, that existed and then extended it out because at one time this, um, this, this wood enclosure ended uh, uh, where this trend, this molding was. So now it sticks out about another six inches. And then we then put the face back on it, the metal grates that existed, and, uh, and then he uh, restained that whole area, refinished it. And um, to the untrained eye, it's, it's, uh, you can't tell the difference. And, and we were happy with that because what, what we were trying to, to capture was the ambiance and, and, uh, and, and the feel for the, for the, uh, the home itself. So uh, throughout this, this space, you know, as we said, this, this was a, a, a um, one of the, the um, um, one, of, one of the few spaces that existed almost from the beginning of the, of the, the estate home uh, until now, but we have seen a lot of changes. And even um, as I spoke of, the room, the, the archway that goes into the dining room. There's also another archway that matches it that goes into the um, uh, to the library, the, the the billiard room, as some people call it. Once again, that was not there uh, when this room was originally created. Um, photographic evidence we have shows that there was a window there again, and uh, and finally the archway that goes into the uh, solarium area also was added. And of course, it, by by the fact that that any and all of those the, uh, the, the, the construction, the, the design of a morale, you know, identical, if you will, uh, tells us that that was all part of Frank Kistler's grand scheme. Um, the, the ceiling of this, these large timbers, um, are from the, uh, the, the period around 1910. Um, and um, I will say that the floor above it is incredibly thin, but, um, but, but they did function in here. And, uh, and so they were built with the original house. Uh, sconces were added when electricity became more uh, more evenly distributed throughout the area. Electricity first showed up, uh, in, you know, before 1915 in here, and so there was some lighting, but how much capacity they had, we don't know. But these sconces uh, were here when we received the home, and uh, and to kind of show the fact that they that they have had a uh, a lasting um, presence here is. Uh, there's a, a few photographs from um, uh, the, the, one of the marriages with the Phipps family, and it was from right, right after World War II, 1946-1947. And uh, if you look in the background, you can see those sconces in there. So, uh, so, so a wonderful room. It's, it's, a, it's a modern place to celebrate. When, uh, when events happen here, people have a tendency to gravitate to it because it's just so warm and accepting. But, uh, but it also has a, has a lot of legacy. Okay, Jeff, we are in one of the coziest rooms, I believe, in Absolutely. the mansion, a room known as the library today. I know mm -hmm. in the past it was known as the billiard room. Right. Um, tell us a little bit about this. Program. Okay. Uh, it, it, I mean, this, this, I mean, even though this was a ranch, and of course, you know, back in, in those days, um, most of the ranchers and the cowboys were, were men, but I mean, this, this definitely could be considered the man cave, you know, of, of the mansion. Uh, I mean, it just it 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 just exudes 
this this testosterone, this manliness of uh, of all wood, um, of of you know not being overly big, um, not having uh, uh, an excessive amount of decorations, but definitely um, being a place where I'm sure after dinner stuff that you know the men probably sat in here, smoked cigars, uh, like you said, a billiard room. I'm sure at one time or another. Um, you know, there, there definitely was a, a, a billiard table in here and, um, and, and it just felt, you know, just felt like this was the, the place where they would be. Um, it was probably constructed based on just looking at, at some photographic evidence and, and what we know of the owners and some records, although we can't be absolutely sure, but it seems like it was built sometime between 1910 and 1920, uh, most likely by Colonel Hughes. Um, and, um, and some of the unique features of this is is the fact you've got this 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 wonderful um, uh, bookcase that was uh, built into it, and uh, and what we have done with the bookcase, of course, is we've added uh, photographs of the owners um, that um, uh, that were oftentimes brought from historical biographies that uh, from the state of Colorado, and so it showed the, the if you will the the chain of ownership of the various. Um, businessmen and ranchers that that were here. Um, the 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 house itself has um, mostly all uh, it's all wood panels, and you can see these large coupons in there. And um, and if you look, you will not see any evidence of, of nail holes to speak of. And so uh, this this wood, while we we did not have to. Um, have to remove anything and do any modifications, so we never got to look at the back of the wall. But um, it, it appears that this wood was again uh, set by craftsmen. The coupons were were constructed in such a way and and shaped and trimmed and everything and put in there, and uh, and and it's held up very well. I mean, uh, this this space, this room is almost 100 years old. Um, it it really has has um, has stood the test of time. Um, all the uh, the features, the uh, um, the cornice and everything up here is all wood, and um, so once again you 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 get the feel of, of this being uh, uh, just a, a room where um, uh, the men of the house would come and gather. Uh, behind me too, also I might point out are uh, a couple um, 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 certificates, if you will, from 1929, and uh, and it, it was from the uh, Denver Stock Show, and we all know that. Um, that this 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 home that many of the owners um, had uh, a strong connection with the Denver Stock Show, and uh, of course um, John Springer was one of the members of the, uh, the 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 board of trustees for the original Festival of the Mountains and Plains, which eventually became the Denver Stock Show. Um, uh, Colonel Hughes was a you know just an incredibly successful cattleman, came up from. From Texas and and was known nationally for his 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 um his, his abilities as a, as a cattleman. Um, Wait Phillips the same, and um and and this uh, these in here are actually um during Frank Kissler's time period, and uh, and they were um, uh, awards given you know for uh, some of the uh, the livestock that was raised as part of the Diamond K Ranch. So these were actually found in the basement of. The home uh, that was um, uh, lived in by uh, uh, Marion Morgan, and um, and we were very fortunate to have uh, had those discovered and 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 uh, and keep those. And I might say also, with respect to the uh, stock show, that <clears throat> the legacy still lives on. The um, the Clough family, who uh, who reside, you know, and operate the cattle operations in the ranching side of uh, of this uh, this site, um, are still. Um, heavily involved in the um, cattle um, operations and with the stock show, and their family also is has a legacy of, of uh, almost a century in Colorado raising cattle. So, so it, it's it's only fitting that that um, this site, even though we use it for a lot of modern communities, still has that connection to, you know, one of the most uh, important uh, industries, you know, in Colorado. Here we are at the end of the solarium. This is the room that's on the lower level, far western side of the mansion, mm -hmm. a room that we all call the card room. 
Yes. And tell us a little bit about that and sure. some history of the room. Yeah, um, uh, as you said, I mean, you call the card room and, um, and, and separated from the rest of the house, uh, you know, the large living spaces that were around. And while I talked about the uh, billiard area or the library being, a, uh, you know, a man cave, I mean, this, this feels like this may have been another place uh, where, you know, definitely um, people could, um, could, could seek um, a little solitude and, and um, because the, this, this, this estate mansion is so massive and has so many large spaces that oftentimes, you know, one just wants to find a small space to, to be in. So it was called the card room. It, it um, while we don't have any specific photographic evidence of it, it, it does feel like it could be definitely a space where cards and games um, were played at, at various times, particularly because it, again, it's part of a large space that was used for, for parties and celebrations. And so it, it, it plays in real well with, you know, what that could be. The, um, uh, you can see the, the molding, the wood molding um, uh, trim that's on these plaster walls is very ornate. And, um, and when we did the renovation, uh, we, we did um, uh, take particular note of that and wanted to kind of um, treat it respectfully. And, and, and uh, it was actually painted all one color when we uh, started the renovation. And we came in and, and, and had a, uh, a, a painting uh, company that does a lot of historic structures, research some and kind of look at what, what color tones would, would uh, match the period and, uh, and did that. Um, and we, we think it's very striking. Um, the uh, fireplace here, <clears throat> faced with marble, um, which tells you probably Kistler touched this because he, you know, he, he brought in a lot of marble into this building. Prior to that, I'd say that almost all of it uh, was stone of some type, and it was very, um, very, um, um, uh, very rich, very warm. But um, Kistler, with his, his, his style for a little more Art Deco theme, um, kind of touched many of the, of the spaces there. Uh, the fireplace itself, I'm sure at one time, since, um, you know, we, we believe this, you know, this, this part of the house was, you know, uh, occurred before 1920, um, was, was a, a main source of heat for here. There, there are radiators, but it also was a long ways from the, 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 uh, the plant, if you will, the uh, coal uh, fired burner uh, boiler, and, uh, and therefore, um, it probably got pretty chilly out here. Far western extreme of the house, you know, when it would get windy, a lot of windows, which are actually, it's quite, quite beautiful, but probably, again, why this space is, is um, considered a card room or, or something similar, because um, if you were in a bedroom here, you probably wouldn't fill the entire room with windows. But uh, that's pure uh, speculation on my part. Um, the, the mirror that exists here is, is period from at, at the least the 1930 renovation and, um, uh, and, and, you know, it just kind of plays in well with the space. With Kistler's renovation, he did put a full, uh, you know, enclosed porch all the way around this. And, um, and as such, it, um, uh, it, it, it probably took some of the light away that previously poured into this room because there were there was no porch or anything like that prior to Kistler coming in and doing the renovation. But still, it, it is it is quite a quite an important room. The uh, what's interesting about this space also is the fact that you know as the the overall site, the ground um, and the grades of it fall away. You you know it, the, you, when you visit the outside porch, uh, you'll you'll you have to walk up many steps to get to it. It's elevated probably six feet above the, the ground around it. And um, this floor is no different. There's actually a fairly significant crawl space below this. And, uh, and part of that was used to run the piping systems and all that. And quite honestly, part of it was just used for storage. But uh, there, there's various things in here. But once again, uh, when, you, when you elevate and you do this, um, it, 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 it doesn't help with the insulation. So uh, this, this could be quite a cold room. Um, but uh, it's a very popular room. Uh, right now it's used uh, oftentimes uh, as the groom's room for weddings and, uh, and kind of plays real well with that. Um, and, um, and, and, and we think, once again, just kind of complements this whole, this whole um, uh, manor house that, uh, that had, had 
different spaces for with, for different intended uses, and uh, and and just feels like uh, it, it was definitely um, a, uh, an, a, a a place that would be sought out um, by by some who were visiting the mansion at various times or attending parties. Right cheery room that we all know of as the solarium. We know in the past it used to be called the ballroom, but we should really talk about that. Um, but tell us a little bit about this room. It's a favorite for you know our visitors that come here, our right. volunteers love it, staff loves it, it's a favorite for a lot of people. So let us know about this room. Oh thanks. Uh, yeah, this is um as you said, this this often was referred to as the ballroom um, in you know, if you will, the more contemporary history you know, from the 70s on and, and probably prior to that also, because it, you know, it, it feels very much like a ballroom. It, it was never uh, heavily furnished. I mean, there, there was furnishings throughout. We do have some, some uh, pretty good photographic record uh, during the, um, the Kistler time period. Although as it is with most of the photographs from the Kistler period, uh, most of the indoor pictures don't have people in them. They, they, uh, they, they were set up in, in, in such a way that it, it gives us a good reference. But, but unfortunately, we, we, would, we would love to have been able to find it. Hopefully someday we'll receive some images, some photos taken, you know, during the 30s, 40s, or later of, of parties that would have occurred at the mansion. Um, and uh, we think that that would just give us such a, uh, such a peek into the, into the lifestyle and, the, and, 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 and uh, those that you know, came here to be entertained. Um, one of the centerpieces, you know, within this room itself is this fireplace. And, and this fireplace was added during the Kistler renovation upgrade. And, um, and it definitely diverges from, a, from the feel and the look of the rest of the mansion, which is, of course, certainly more ranch house to have, you know, such an ornate um, marble fireplace. Um, and, um, and, and this is really the only place where marble was used heavily, um, you know, as a as a decorator feature, other than in the bathrooms. In, in several of the bathrooms, there were marble countertops um, that were that were placed in there, but nothing near as, as extensive as this. Um, as far as the vintage of the actual marble itself and and, and the the, um, the place of origin. Uh, I'm not really sure personally. I, you know, I would like to to talk with some individuals because there are uh, theories that it's it's um, that it's Italian marble, which would certainly be uh, indicative of the time period, which is you know the the 1920s and 30s, and when of course bringing Italian marble over here uh, was was you know very very consistent with the Art Deco kind of theme, um, and then of course. You know, Colorado is blessed with some incredible marble quarries themselves out in the western slope, and so potentially could have could it come from marble Colorado or areas surrounding that? Uh, we don't know, but we're hoping to be able to, to solve that mystery at some point. Um, also within this room is um, the fact that it's it's it, it's where some of the rooms, like the billiard room library, is very warm and cozy and. And I'd say the same thing for the front living room area. This this is not necessarily cozy. It's it's a very, in some ways, maybe a stark room, um, but but it also embraces the light that that we receive, you know, here. I mean, with as many windows as we have facing south, and the fact that, of course, in Colorado we have so much sun, and then also we have some some uh, you know significant windows on on the uh, north side. Uh, it fills this room with light. And um, and then we have this 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 traver, uh, excuse me, a uh, terrazzo floor, um, very bright, very reflective, um, and uh, and of course that also that raises the illumination. And then um, and then above us we have this this um, this fairly intricate interior uh, architecture, including these coffers that that um, that kind of crisscross the, the house. For many years, we, we thought that the coffers were definitely an architectural feature within the house. But when we started to do the renovation in 2012 and, and actually in uh, the years preceding that, 10-11, um, we had to do 
you know, structural investigation. And so we, we actually um, went inside a couple of these coffers in order to look at them. And we discovered that there are still beams within those coffers. And, um, and, and we are aware that in, in the, the renovation in 1929, 1930, and so that um, there, there were expansions and, and upgrades that were handled upstairs. And, uh, and this room was probably expanded. Um, well, actually, I, I, we, we believe it's pretty, pretty clear by the exterior stonework that has changed quite a bit. Um, and dates some of the new stuff in those areas dates to the to the nineteen twenty five renovation that it, that the upstairs was expanded the bedrooms upstairs and uh, and and that would play into the fact that then additional steel was added in order to to support um, the higher use and the the um, and the higher um, uh, the roof and, and all that was added as part of the the renovation in nineteen twenty nine so you have these steel beams you could lower the the ceiling uh, the whole, throughout, and you know that would be one way to do it. But why not create more of a, an interesting architectural feature and just create this this coffering, this 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 car compartmentalization of it, if you will, um, which really adds, I, I think, a lot of interest to the room and and uh, and and keeps the space, um, uh, you know, more voluminous than you have in some of the other spaces. Uh, some of the other features in this room that. Um, are of interest are the uh, light fixtures. And the light fixtures are essentially the only light fixtures that remained in the house when we took ownership of it from a time period, um, probably the renovation time period. Um, they're, uh, they're, they're made out of brass or bronze. Uh, they heavily tarnished over the years, but you know, anybody watches Antiques Roadshow know that's patina, that's, you don't touch that. but. Um, they, they're fully functional. Um, they've been here, like I said, you know, for at least, you know, 80 years, and um, and and we feel very blessed to have them. If you look at the uh, sconces, the sconces um, are very ornate, and they have uh, you know sort of uh, uh, carvings on them, if you will, of could be a sea serpent, could be a dragon, could be a variety of uh, uh, some people believe it dolphins because uh, there are some uh, fixtures upstairs that have kind of a dolphin theme to them. Uh, so it, you know, it, it really adds that charm to the building, the fact that we did that. Um, during the renovation, we did go in and, and uh, upgrade the wiring so that um, the, the fixtures that we have in there now, because we, we did put new electrical wiring throughout the building. And, um, and therefore that, that you know, hopefully gives us a 50 plus years of, of, of service, if not more, for before we have to, to do anything with it. Um, the, um, also the, uh, the, the, if you will, the curtain rods that are in here, again, are, are green and have a, um, you know, a, a certain level of um, patina to them. And uh, while we, we, we don't have a, an exact date on it, they once again look very, very um, similar and, and uh, to, to the, the fixtures that would have been used during the during that, that time period. And even the square pattern on the end of them kind of ties in with the square pattern on this, um, this border on the, um, um, on the, the terrazzo floor. So, um, so I think that, um, that this itself could very well, um, you know, tie that all together, having an architect that, that does that. And, um, and I, the, the, um, the age of the floor, like I said, I mean, Terrazzo was used heavily during the uh, uh, during that that time period, the 20s and the 30s, and, and and throughout. I mean, definitely on public buildings, it was used a lot. Um, the WPA had a lot of uh, public buildings, of post offices, um, uh, train stations, things like that, and and oftentimes artisans were employed by that. And uh, in a uh, in a coincidence. Um, after we had renovated the building, there was a gentleman that was visiting here and um, from Denver, and he indicated that um, he was looking at, at, at the floor and we were talking a little bit about, about it and the time period. And he said that he's of Italian descent and that his grandfather um, was a Mason during that time period. And, um, and he said that he remembers his grandmother talking about 
the fact that his grandfather used to have to travel down south of Denver for a very large project that he was doing down there. And he felt very proud of it. It was a personal home. And while he doesn't know specifically that this was a home, the coincidence uh, seems almost uh, too good to, to, to not be true. And, um, and when we did do the renovation of this, we, um, we, we brought in some specialists that, that resided in the, in the region, and they, they essentially uh, ground down the, 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 a tiny bit of the uh, exterior surface and then refinished it. And in doing so, helped kind of um, restore some of the blemishes and um, that were in the, uh, the structure itself. Um, there are a couple areas where there are some water spots, and those, those have been here for as long as, the, you know, um, as the house has been um, owned by Mission Yale and then the subsequent owners. And, um, you know, and as much as we would have liked to remove them, unfortunately, those, those are embedded so deeply in there that uh, we would not be able to do it. Um, this room, as we talked about being a place of celebration, opened up onto the front veranda. And that, again, was another space, a very large porch and a very, uh, a very open space for um, outdoor um, parties and outdoor dinners that, that would most likely occur during the time period. And then also there are two doorways that go into the backyard. So, so this was a space that, that was very flexible and allowing a lot of movement in and around. And uh, whether it be a picnic, whether it be a formal party, whether it be a dinner of some type, um, it, it could be held in this, in this space, and, um, and, and, and in general that, you know, it, it could hold the capacity of, of, of the group that would come to visit this area. So, continuing our, uh, our walk around on the uh, solarium, um, I, I spoke, you know, a fair amount about the terrazzo floor earlier, and, um, and I think it, it's also um, kind of interesting to, to note some of the flaws on the floor, if you want to call it that, um, and is there a reason for them? And uh, it definitely was not a workmanship issue. I, I will say that from the very beginning. And uh, what, we, what we did see is that we saw this, this crack and those who may have visited the mansion during, during a time period of, um, of essentially from let's say 1981 or so to uh, the renovation time period of 2010 uh, would notice that that crack was fairly large and noticeable. It, it was almost trippable, if you will. And, um, and, and what, what occurred there is that, as I talked about earlier, the, um, this room was expanded slightly um, as part of the 1929 renovation. And this, this space over here, essentially from this wall here, which is a large exterior wall, all the way to the corner there, normally 10 feet, let's say 8 to 10 feet, um, was expanded. And, um, and in doing so, um, you know, the, the steel beams were added in order to span these spaces. And, uh, and then this floor was, a, was, was extended. The, 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 the terrazzo wasn't here, but there was a concrete slab here. And so that was added. And um, beneath us, on the, to my left, if you will, um, you essentially have a concrete slab on, on the ground. You know, uh, and there's a tiny space there, but not very much slab on grade is referred to. This area over here actually has a large crawl space beneath it. Um, it's, it, it varies in height, but it's about three feet to maybe a little, a little taller as you move further to the west because the ground falls quite a bit to the point that it's, it's easily four feet at the far west bedroom. Um, and this crawl space uh, was there uh, uh, essentially to, well, to, to one, allow for the grades to be adjusted accordingly because as you step outside, you step down to get to the back lawn. You know, they could have potentially looked at raising the whole ground, but that, that didn't really make sense during the renovation. So this, this, this floor is elevated, if you will. It also provided accommodation for um, a lot of the modern um, conveniences, heating and cooling systems and all that. There are pipes and conduits that run down through here. And, and in fact, as this extended out to the east and went into the backyard, there actually uh, was a, um, a, a tunnel system, for lack of a better word, um, although not to get too, too married to the whole tunnel concept. It was not only about three feet tall, and um, the sides, both the sides and, the, and, the, um, and the, the top were concrete, the bottom was dirt, and so it was essentially a steam tunnel. Those were, 
used very commonly during you know uh, the early 20th century to move steam pipes and water service and things like that from buildings to buildings, military installations, large uh, public uh, facilities, uh, campuses, uh, uh, you know, factories would have these steam tunnels. It allowed uh, utilities to be put in and maintained over time without having to uh, bury things. So, uh, so we essentially had a steam tunnel that came up out of this, went out into the backyard and went across the courtyard into the boiler building on the east side there. And um, there are still a few remnants of it here or there, but we ended up having to fill in part of it because the elevation of the very top of it uh, was in conflict with the uh, Great Hall that we had to add, and we couldn't adjust the elevation of the Great Hall. So, um, so anyways, you, you have this, this space in here. So you have this ground here, slab on grade, and then you have this elevated end. Unfortunately, as time goes, sometimes things move a little bit. And so when they moved, they, they, they did this, and they, they sent the crack along here. Pretty stable. It, um, it really had, hasn't been moving at all over time. It just occurred over an ex a long extended period of time. Um, the specialty contractor we brought in here was able to, like I said, take the, the finish down uh, and, and bring back the, um, uh, the, the brightness, the illumination of it, the reflection, the, the, the sheen of the, the floor much to a much higher standard, closer to probably what we saw during the, during the, the 1920s, or not during the 1930s and on. So, um, so this was a very special space. As we've said before, this solarium having a lot of light, it was a very popular room for entertaining. And in fact, um, one of the few images we have of an actual entertainment uh, event, if you will, going on is um, from a uh, 1949 article um, by Life Magazine. It was a very short feature at the back of the magazine, those that make frequent like magazines, there was always kind of a, uh, um, a, a, a nepilogue, a, a short three or four page, mostly pictorial um, story of, of something going on um, across the, the country or the world. And, um, and during that, that episode, or during that um, time, uh, the uh, Rappel Hunt Club was featured. And uh, so uh, the photographers came out, they, they followed the hunt, they took pictures throughout um, the, uh, the large photograph that's in the front room as you enter and, uh, and move to the left there is, is actually a, a, a photograph taken from that, that uh, sequence. And, uh, and there are uh, several images, some of the front yard, and, um, and then there's an image here of, of some of the huntsmen and, um, and the members of the, um, of the party um, you know, enjoying a, uh, uh, a post hunt brunch, if you will, and, uh, and they're sitting on that bench, uh, or that shelf, if you will, and, um, and so, uh, you know, it was very clear that this, this was a space that was considered uh, very, uh, uh, very functional and, 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 and frankly, maybe the best place for, for friends and, and family to kind of celebrate, you know, uh, uh, throughout the house. So, uh, so uh, as part of that, there are, there are activities that occur here. This is certainly not the main um, event venue um, because the size of it just doesn't accommodate that. But uh, it's often, you know, a gathering place for uh, for parties of, of of small groups and even uh, you know getting too large and they're allowed to essentially move through and spill out to some of the outdoor spaces. So uh, so a very important feature in this house and 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 kind of shows a nice balance between you know the function of of the, the ranch houses. The, uh, the living space for the family, and then a place to, to welcome friends and entertain.